and it is now my pleasure to invite Her Excellency, Mayor Amor Motley, Prime Minister of Barbados and Chair of the Global Leaders Group on Antimicrobial Resistance to address the meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and distinguished delegates and heads of agencies all. Let me adopt the words of everyone who has spoken thus far because you have so appropriately outlined all of the challenges and indeed reflected the political will we must have to move forward. This is an important meeting and, and I, let me at the outset thank you for your kind words but to say that they're not for me. They are for all of the people who have worked behind the scenes whose names are many but I hope that a record will be placed as to their efforts. I want to thank the members of the Global Leaders Group as well, Leadership Group. Um, we started this journey with Sheikh Kasina from Bangladesh, and then the Deputy Prime Minister of Malta, Chris Hearn, and we continue today now with the Maltese Minister of Health working side by side. I'd like to thank Ambassadors Jackman and Fraser and their teams for the excellent work in allowing us to be able to work with the various delegations to get the declaration that we have here today. It is not a given that this could have happened. And therefore, in today's very, very difficult and challenging world, particularly with geopolitics trumping so much, the achievement of this political declaration is a major achievement. This declaration eloquently describes and proves what we know needs to be done. And it is an impressive blueprint for action. But it does impose on us work. And the truth is, the hard work starts tomorrow. We have to be able to raise the funding for the National Plan of Action. We've set a very, very modest target of $100 million. And I hope that we can reach out to the leaders within the private sector, the pharmaceutical industries, the meat industries, all of the various players, because as I've said very often with climate, unless they have a plan to live on a different planet, then we have to define the win-win solution for us all, because this is very clear that this silent pandemic, slow motion pandemic, literally will become responsible for the largest number of deaths by 2050 if we do nothing. The reality is that we cannot claim the world's attention for one day. This must now be imbued in the sensitivities of all of our citizens, all of our families, and particularly our young people whose battle this must be. I believe that almost everyone in this room knows someone who has died from a hospital-aided infection or for whom antibiotics simply just has not worked. When I started this journey, I did not know that it would become personal for me and my family, and I pray that no family has to experience what we did with respect to the loss of someone purely because of the ineffectiveness of antibiotics to be able to deal with infection. This will make going to the dentist, as you heard from Dr. Tedros, or having an operation, or going into the garden and getting um, a cut very, very much a life-threatening issue for some, purely because of the ineffectiveness of the antibiotics. So the public education and public sensitization program must go beyond governments and ministries, must not have a siloed approach um, with health, agriculture, and environment of operating singularly. But the example of the quadripartite leadership, which is not only a good example for us here, but in almost every other aspect of what we are facing as global challenges, ought to be emulated by others at the national level. The hard work as well means that we have also to recognize that the raising of the $100 million is just for national plans. But the big, big heavy lift is what must be raised in order to encourage research. We have gone from 20 companies in the year 2000 doing antibiotics research to four. And the world cannot depend only on the effort of four. Because the economics of antibiotics does not work simply because of the limited course of tablets that you take as compared to other forms of medication, I believe that this is one of the most perfect examples that we can find to be able to force us in the direction of the establishment of the designation of this level of research 
within the context of pandemic preparedness and prevention as a global public good and therefore requiring dedicated financing that goes beyond simply what is immediately available within the context of the particular sector at this point in time. Um, I hope, therefore, that the World Bank, in the general discussion as to its own reform and its movement towards the financing of global public goods and the guardian of the global public commons, will be able to see appreciable progress in its reform efforts so that this can be one of the early beneficiaries, not just the climate crisis, because as you heard from the Deputy Secretary General, this is as much an existential crisis as climate. I want to therefore end by saying that AMR is not simply an acronym. These are investments that we are making in our future, in our children, in our infrastructure, in how we take care of animals, in how we deal with our businesses, in how we work on our farms, in how we work in our hospitals, in how we prepare for the pandemic. And that may be a word that causes PTSD in today's world, but if you think we had PTSD from COVID, try PTSD from AMR over the course of the next 30 years. Let this be owned, not by governments, but by the people of the world, because they are the ones who one by one by one are exposed to infection and for whom our use of antibiotics safely and effectively and other alternates to antimicrobials will be a lifesaver. I want to thank all who are participating today and ask us simply, let us make the commitment not to let this be another perfunctory debate and that we continue just to say we participated, but let us raise the awareness and build for a common future where all of us protect each other against the risk of this awful, silent, slow-motion pandemic. Thank you. I thank the Prime Minister of Barbados and the Chair of the Global Leaders Group on Antimicrobial Resistance.